Good evening, people. Today we're going to be talking about AI pathfinding inside Godot, and we're going to be using one of the methods called the Navigation Region 2D to create a target for our enemies to actually pathfind and avoid obstacles to reach. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So we got this default scene here. There's nothing going on. There's no collisions. I can spawn my target, which is an apple, and my orc isn't moving. So let's see how we can replicate this. Uh, using the navigation uh, region 2D system, you need two nodes. Uh, we'll go to our parent scene and add a child node. We'll search nav, and we have the navigation region 2D. So we'll first need that one. Uh, the second one will be placed on our enemy. Uh, you can right click, add a child node, and they need the navigation agent 2D. Um, We'll head back to the region and we actually have to set up the, uh, the polygon. So inside the inspector, under the navigation polygon, click new. And then you can actually define the shape of the uh, polygon you wanna use. I'm just gonna define a rectangle. Once I get to all the corners I want, I can press enter and it'll complete the shape. And then at the top I can hit bake and it'll add my uh, navigation mesh to the scene um, that the agent can use to traverse around the world. Um, but if I play the scene, you'll notice that nothing happens. That's because we have no code on the org to actually use this. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that up. So under the enemy, let's right click and attach a script. Uh, we are going to drop it in our scripts folder and we'll just call it enemy and hit create. I need a couple of references. I need my sprite and I need my navigation agent component so I can hold control, drag these in, and it'll automatically create my references. Uh, I'm gonna rename them though. I'm gonna use anim sprite for my animated uh, reference. And then for the nav, uh, I'll call it nav underscore agent. Then we'll need a few different variables. Let me go ahead and hide myself so I don't block anything. Um, we're going to need, uh, I'll go ahead and give it the export key flag here, uh, but we'll need a speed variable. I'm going to typecast it as a float and set it equal to be 200. I'm going to do another export variable called target, and this is where we're going to have the orc move to. I'm going to typecast that as a node 2D and set it equal to be null. The reason I'm using a node 2D instead of a vector 2 is because I'm going to be using an object. Uh, I'm going to be spawning an apple uh, in this case, which is a node 2D object. Um, and then just have him basically get the global position of that and, you know, move towards it. Uh, we're going to be using three functions. Uh, two of the functions are built-in Godot function and we'll make one custom function. Uh, the first function will, of course, be our ready function. The second one will be our custom function that I'm going to call targeting, but you can call it whatever you want. The third and final built-in Godot function is going to be called the physics process function. I'm not going to be using the delta inside the, uh, the method, so I'm just going to underscore it for now. And then I'll just call into a pass. So it'll uh, let me uh, continue the code. We'll start with ready. Um, this is the um, the simplest thing. I think I'm just going to get a, uh, a reference to our animation sprite, call the method play, and I have two animations on my animation component. I have a walk and an idle. I'm just going to call it an idle. Uh, that way when we play the scene, my orc has a little bit more life and he's, uh, he's idling just fine. Um, after that, we're gonna work on the targeting uh, function. This is the uh, more complicated one here. Um, you can do this any way you want. You can honestly probably just target the player, uh, which is probably what you're gonna be doing anyways. Uh, but the, in this prototype, I'm basically gonna spawn or instantiate some, uh, some apples, uh, and I'm gonna throw them into this item collection bin here. And then if you come to the node inspector, there's a groups tab. It has this group uh, tag called item container. I'm going to basically use this to reference it in code. So you can create any number of tags you want here and just add them in. And then you can reference whatever tag name you give it. 
inside your script. And I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, so we're gonna create a variable called item container. We'll call into the uh, method called get tree. And then the other method get nodes in group. And this would be where you give it the uh, group name. So item container. This is an array. I'm gonna grab the first element in the array, which is zero or the uh, element one. Um, we're gonna create a new variable called available item. We'll set that equal to the item containers children. We can do that by calling the method um, get children. And we can say if uh, exclamation point available item call the method is empty. So basically check available items is empty and if it is not empty because we added the exclamation point to the front we can create a new variable called the new target and set that equal to the available item and we'll just get the first element in that array. And then we can set our target that we defined at the top of the script to be equal to this new target. And this completes our complicated targeting code. So pretty basic. Um, let's go ahead and work on the uh, physics process. This runs every frame. Uh, the first thing we'll want to check is, uh, is instance valid for our variable target? Basically, does target exist? Is it null or is there something in there? If there's something in there, we want to set our nav agent target position equal to the target's global position. And then we might as well call in our animation sprite, tell it to play, and then we'll do the walk animation at this point. We're going to come out of that if statement into an else statement. So basically if the target is still null, basically if it doesn't exist, we should probably go ahead and call our custom function uh, targeting. Basically look again, see if there's something in there. So it's checking every frame basically. Then we can come out of that else statement into another if check. We'll say if the nav agent is navigation finished, then we might as well get a reference to our animation sprite. Tell it to play idle. If we're idling, let's go ahead and return and ignore the rest of the code inside this uh, physics function. Uh, if we're not idling and we're moving, uh, then we're gonna need to do a few different things. So we'll need to get our current nav position. So we'll create a variable for that. And that will of course be equal to the enemy's global position, right? Then we'll also need to create a variable called the next navigation position and then we can set that equal to the nav agents uh, and we can call the method get next path position now because we have the current position and the next position we can determine the velocity uh, any character body uh, 2d object or any rigid body object has a velocity so you can uh, set velocity equal to the current nav position, call the method direction2, and then we'll pass in the next navigation position. So it'll basically uh, you know, get that vector for you, and then you can multiply that by the speed variable we declared at the top of the script. With our velocity defined, we can simply call the move and slide function, or move and collide, either one. Um, move and slide's a little bit better for getting around uh, Ob uh, walls and objects though <clears throat> so it might make more sense to use that um, and then the velocity will basically pass in and move the object uh, the rest of the code is basically just going to be um, changing the uh, the sprites uh, flip horizontal so um, we can call into one last if statement and we'll just say if the velocity dot the x which is the left and right is greater than zero then we can tell our animation sprite flip horizontal is equal to false else 
the animation sprite flip horizontal is equal to true and that's just to get the uh, orc moving left and right correctly when he's speeding around on the map uh, and if we push f6 and we play the scene i can instantiate an apple he's gonna run straight at it doesn't quite make it though um, and he just ran straight through this fence so we got some issues with physics and he's not quite reaching his destination so uh, if we go back into our 2d scene we can select the navigation agent um, and inside the inspector you can expand out the pathfinding and there's a path desired and target desired the lower number you use um, the more accurate the uh, enemy is going to be when they're traversing towards their target destination but you got to be careful if you go too low you might get some jittering uh, with your enemies so you know be careful with it but there's other ways to deal with that too but it looks like that's working okay uh, the other issue is we have no physics so uh, depending on how you're setting up your your worlds um, if you're using sprites you can obviously just add a uh, you know a physics body to it and that'll handle it um, but if you're using a tile map then um, I have other videos that kind of describe that but I'll do a brief demonstration here I have two layers I have a terrain layer and I have an obstacle layer I only want to add physics on the obstacles here so I need to select my tile set here and then I need to go to physics layer and I need to add a physics layer now you need to define the actual collision and collision masking right so you can hit the three dots and edit your layer names and I've defined um, a player enemy items and a fence layer and then I've set each object in my scene to be the appropriate layer uh, and mask against it so you can define yours you know this is going to be obviously prototype specific or game specific so you have to figure out what works best for your implementation but uh, in this example this is a fence so I'm going to set the collision layer to be fence only and then on the mask I have to tell it basically uh, what do I want the fence to block I want the fence to block the player and I want the fence to block the enemy and that's my gonna be my setup here so it still won't do anything uh, because we have to actually apply the physics to the sprite uh, but we can do that now. So with the tile map selected, come to the tile set down here, and you want to select paint, select a property. We're going to do our physics layer that we just created, and you can um, modify you know the size of the collision. I'm just going to select it all just to make it quick here. This video is already getting long. And then with that done, I can play the scene with F6, and now I cannot get through, and neither can the orc. So you kind of get stuck there. Normally, the way you uh, you fix that is you basically want the uh, the physics to calculate with the navigation region. Um, so typically, you'll just select your region, you'll clear the navigation data, and then you'll just rebake it. And nine times out of ten, you're good to go. Uh, in this particular example, you'll notice I'm not, and that's because there's some prerequisites to to set up to make this work. Um, as far as I know the navigation region will only calculate on layer zero so if I go to my tile map and I come down to my layers you'll notice I have two layers I have a terrain and I have an obstacles right? so terrain obstacles um, my terrain is on my layer zero my obstacles is on my um, layer one so the navigation agent can't reach it because it's on layer one it needs to be layer zero if I move this up, it's now on layer zero, but I can't see my fences or, uh, you know, fence post. Uh, a few different ways you can solve this. The easiest way is just go to your terrain and make it a lower Z index. And then that should work just fine too. Now, if I play this scene, um, it's, it's still not going to work. And then if I clear my navigation data and rebake it, it's also still not calculating the fence in there. The other prerequisite uh, is that your physics objects that you want the navigation uh, mesh to handle, they need to be children of the navigation region 2D uh, node. So I basically have to drag the tile map into the navigation region and then since it's now the parent, uh, I can tell it to 
clear the data and bake it, and you'll notice I have this complex polygon now. And if I play the scene, I can lay an apple, and now my uh, enemy AI is doing very good um, obstacle avoidance and collision checking and moving around the map perfectly to actually reach its target destination. Obviously, it does have limitations, so if I go outside the map, he'll go as far as he can, but he can't reach it because he doesn't have any of the navigation data needed to make that decision tree. So, um, some other important callouts I will say um, with this implementation is uh, under the navigation region, if you click on here, there's an agent section with a radius. Uh, if you look closely along the edges here, specifically to the red, uh, and also to the fence here. The lower the radius, the closer your edges are going to be. And if I clear and rebake, you'll notice it's basically riding that uh, red edge, and I think it's a, bit, a little bit closer on the fencing as well. Um, you can't tell because I didn't uh, use the exact shape of the fence. I kind of went the, the whole spray. But if we flip this back and rebake, you'll notice this gets wider. So that's an important call out there. Uh, the other thing um, that I'll say to you is with the navigation agent 2D that's on your enemy, uh, you may want to change the path po uh, post process from corridor funnel to edge centered. Uh, some people will prefer the uh, behavior that that uh, derives. That's pretty good. Uh, also, there is avoidance that you can set up. I'm gonna maybe cover that in a different video though. And the debug debugging, if you enable that, when you play the scene and you lay, it'll actually um, show you all the paths that's actually being calculated when your enemy is moving around. So that can be helpful too for troubleshooting. And then the last thing that I can think of is under the enemy object itself, you can set the motion mode from uh, grounded to floating. And then you can set the minimum wall angle to be zero degrees, and sometimes you'll have a better um, experience with that versus the uh, ground and setting. So that may be something you want to play with as well. But that pretty much concludes the video. I hope you learned something new and you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, consider leaving a like and a sub. But otherwise, I'll see you on the next one.